Um, welcome everyone to the community meeting. I'm not sure if Andrew already has uh, welcomed everyone, but I'm just going to do that again. Um, please everyone um, fill your name into the, uh, into the meeting notes. I'm just going to share the, the Google document so that you can do that. Um, other than that, if you have anything like uh, for the agenda and notes and uh, for the open floor, please please go ahead and fill it in. Um, so next point would be the introduction. So um, is there anyone who is already or is first time here or who wants to introduce himself? Hey everyone, uh, I am Harshit Gupta. I am a software engineer with uh, with Microsoft and I have been uh, working on KubeWord for our internal products. Welcome. Thank Great you. Great to have you here. Thanks. Um, yeah, really interesting. Um, so um, if you have anything, then please just, uh, just go ahead and uh, just uh, put anything to the agenda and notes um, or open floor if you want to discuss anything. Um, so, okay, next point will be the schedule check-in, which I'm going to take a quick look at. So we are currently on, oh, Alexander, that's sad, yeah, you know, I've had so, a bad experience like audio also myself. I hope I'm, I'm crossing my fingers for you so that it somehow um, works out in the end. Um, so yeah, we are in uh, 14th of February. So um, we um, should have just passed the milestone of the RC0. Um, um, I uh, I'm sure that the release branch already has been uh, created, um, but I'm unaware that the first RC tag has already been placed. So I guess it's uh, not yet done, but I it should be should be done in any minute. Um, next one is the um, upcoming call for papers check-in. Oh, so you're saying that probably um, I can unmute Alexander. Okay, I'm trying to do that. I have this button, I'm clicking it, but nothing is happening. So let me see. Well, I don't know. Okay. Thanks, Andrew. See you. <clears throat> if you if you cannot unmute uh, me unmute, then on the top right you should have like a, an OK to press. That should that should fix it. I don't know why they added it. There you go. Thank you. Yay! Hey, Alexander. Nice to hear your voice. Oh, cool. Nice to be here. Great. Okay, so let me see. Um, yeah, next upcoming conferences um, that we have open uh, call for proposals um, is the DEF CONF in, uh, in Czech uh, Republic, uh, which um, will accept um, submissions until March the 3rd. Um, it will happen on June the 13th to June the 15th in Brno, Czechia. Uh, the schedule will be announced to April 8th to 14th. Um, I'm just going to drop the link here so that you can see it. Okay, um, then, uh, then we can start with the agenda notes. Um, so the first, um, it's a quarantine PR that we um, are um, trying to get in, which is uh, making a lot of lanes uh, fail due to uh, like a, um, 
like finalize a problem that is makes the VMs uh, not go away, uh, which uh, then uh, leads to um, uh, namespace deletion problem. So uh, we have this quarantine PR that is um, uh, noted here um, with that uh, Cupid Dev mailing list. Uh, email um, and uh, we are trying to get that in. So sorry for the inconvenience that we had to hold other PRs to get that in, but uh, we will uh, release the hold as soon as that PR got in so that, um, and we will notify you if the when the situation has resolved, has been resolved. So on, other, on another note, um, oh, besides that, any questions to that quarantine PR? Okay, um, then everything should be clear. Um, next one is a design proposal that needs attention. There is a Helm charts proposal. Um, I'm unfamiliar with that one. Um, so this is like from, from when is it? It's on uh, mid last year. Okay, interesting. So I figured that this has come to the agenda since no one has yet picked it up. Um, but Vasily already left the review, I think. Um, and I'm not sure. What's the state of that? I think they're discussing it still. Okay, I think it, like it has somehow stalled in October last year. Yeah, is Vasily here? Okay, doesn't sound like that. I'm just going to Just pink Vasily on that Helmshaw's proposal. I hope that we'll get some feedback from him for next time. Okay, since I think then we have exhausted the agenda and notes, there is the open floor. Um, there is a couple of new design proposals. Um, for example, like the descheduler support. Um, there is also like the generalized virtualization stack to different liquid hypervisor drivers and the first cozy stack release. So that that's but that sounds doesn't sound like like a design proposal, I think. That is something different. So let me see. I think that he meant to like um, just to bring this to our attention. So um, anyone into wanting to look at the descheduler support or did I just miss? Around here. Oh yeah. Yes, so uh, the descheduler team, the upstream team is looking into it. We are ironing out the, the less details before uh, the implementation will start. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll need to ask the maintainers to approve this uh, design proposal, but until then, feel free just to be be aware of it. Yeah, and so five seconds or less, the explanation of what's going on here is that the Kubert and the descheduler don't play so nice together because of the way that the descheduler does eviction. So this is negotiating out a... Uh, a series of steps we'll adhere to that will make uh, a better interaction between the two components. Is there anything involved on the, the scheduler side or is it purely? Yeah, so we're, what we're, what the basic plan is that we're gonna annotate our VMs to let the descheduler know that 
we take longer than instantaneous to evict. So please don't keep rescheduling evictions, you know, in rapid fire. And so then their obligation obviously is to honor those annotations. That's why some of the people that are reviewing this are from that team. So that they're, uh, we're, we're not just, you know, doing something arbitrarily in the dark. We've got a, uh, you know, coordination with them. Cool. Um, uh, or else to a question, uh, the, uh, this is Antonio. Um, do you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. Yep. I, I've seen that, I, I just took a quick look at the design proposal, but I've seen that people, I mean, there, there seems to be a focus on the scheduler itself rather than what Cuber should do uh, in terms of like interacting with the scheduler. Uh, I was just wondering if, uh, like, is that actually needed? I mean, shouldn't we just, you know, focus on what Cuber should do in relation to the scheduler and rather than, you know, what the scheduler should, should do? Well, yes, I agree um, with you. Go ahead, sorry. Earl, sorry. So uh, I had a conversation with uh, Jan, and tomorrow we are meeting to discuss this in detail. But yes, I agree with you. We don't need to put their plans in this specific uh, design proposal. There should be two design proposals, one for the descheduler and one for Qbert. This one should be for Qbert. And you're welcome to... Uh, review it. The nice part, at least, is that the people that are chiming in with, you know, what say what the descheduler should do are actually working on the descheduler. So, you know, that it's at least a tacit agreement. But yes, I completely agree. There should be two design proposals. Okay. Yeah. No. I mean, it's it's definitely nice that they're collaborating and they're pitching in. Uh, I just. I just kind of saw like that there it's a bit stalling with all the modifications, you know, mentioning what the, the, the scheduler should do and, you know, what, uh, what, it, what it should guarantee in terms of like uh, for the Qbert interaction, but that's not really needed in the Qbert design proposal. I mean, the Qbert design proposal should, should specify what Qbert does. And uh, just saying, you know, but uh, I totally whatever agree. Else, you know, making it progress. I'm done then. I was just um, listening because I thought there was someone else trying to speak up. I'm not sure if it was Aurel. Yeah, I said to Antonio that I am tot I totally agree. There should be two documents, one for us, one for them. And tomorrow I'm meeting uh, with Jan to iron out all this stuff. He wrote it before we agreed to meet. It's so it's okay. Okay, great. So we have a path forward, um, which is great to hear. Um, and then uh, everything should be should be going on as um, as desired. Okay, then. Um, then let's move on. If there's nothing else to like, to like questions or comments on that one, um, then let's uh, move on to the second um, design proposal that is new. This is actually really new, like two days ago. So. Um, uh, this is about um, how Qubit can be used to create liberal virtual machines that are backed by diverse hypervisor drivers such as QM and KVM and so on. Um, so anyone already looked into that or is eager to uh, look into that, like the generalization of the virtualization stack? I see that already Fabian has already um, commented on that one, but I think there might be other people that, oh, Alicia also looked in, looks into that already. Oh, well, looked into that, and they have a couple of comments. Yeah, oh, just... so I see. It's yours, like Harshit Gupta. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we. I have been uh, at Microsoft. We use uh, Kubert in our uh, project, and I was working on a private fork to uh, have it work with Cloud Hypervisor. Seemed like there were not too many changes needed to get it to work. So um, I want to see if we can... Um, you know, make it Kubert itself flexible enough to support other other hypervisor drivers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds, sounds Russia, is is Microsoft willing to provide the CI for? Um, for Sorry, I didn't hear the last part. Is Microsoft willing to provide a CI for cloud hypervisor? 
a CI is, uh, sorry, I don't know that. Yeah, I mean, um, every time that we modify Qbert and we allow any new scenarios, uh, for example, um, any new hypervisors, um, then we need to test those. I yep. mean, testing costs money and uh, and expertise. So there will be people, there needs to be some kind of a commitment from Microsoft um, that uh, they will uh, support Qbert uh, supporting uh, cloud hypervisor and then also some some kind of a testing environment uh, that will be there. Otherwise, <clears throat> it's really difficult to see how can we commit to something to, to, to provide um, you know, changes in Qbert um, that we're not able to test and uh, we don't have expertise for. Okay, yeah, makes sense. I have to get in touch with the, cloud, the team working on Cloud Hypervisor. Uh, to see who among who among say the Microsoft folks would be taking that on, yeah, that is something I did not think of before. Um, and yes, I uh, so uh, I am going to add Microsoft to the list of adopters. I am working on a pull request for that. So Harshit, if you yeah. um, need any support regarding the CI setup or something, uh, then please. Just uh, ping, for example, like me or like um, like Brian Carey um, or like like Lubo is also involved. Um, those guys, or just just uh, give us a shout out at the Cuba Dev um, Slack channel so that we can somehow be of help for you. So um, so, so we can we can at least um, introduce you a bit to how CI is currently working and how um, we might find a way to integrate this. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, okay, I need cool. some information on that for sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, okay. I, um, I have a so. question, um, if I may. Um, is this inter like, uh, would, this be, would it be acceptable for you to only uh, specify that this is for cloud uh, hypervisor or do you insist on keeping this like general for anything else than cloud hypervisor? At the moment, we are looking at Cloud Hypervisor alone. Okay, because I mean, um, I think a few months ago, we had a uh, SEM community trying to uh, do the same. And there, I think we we saw a couple of differences which were, um, I think, blockers. So Cloud Hypervisor is okay because it's also like process. Um, you, you get the process, you can manipulate the process and, and such. It's pretty yeah. much the same model as a human, but for example, for the same, you have the new domain, we cannot uh, see the domain. Hmm. The operating system doesn't uh, doesn't report that this is, these resources are allocated, so it doesn't play well with Kubernetes and such. So I think we, if, we, if we can specify that, hey, this is just meant for cloud hypervisor or hypervisors, uh, not so much different from Humo, then this has a higher chance of uh, being accepted, at least from my side. Uh, also, we need to speak about uh, how Cloud Hypervisor is going to be used. Uh, is it going to be a Libert driver that we are going to interact with Libert, uh, that Libert will interact with like, Cloud Hypervisor, or is it going to be a separate, uh, entirely separate thing? It, no, it um, yeah, it is, as you said, uh, going to be a libword driver and all communication from the word launcher would be with libwordd or the or the modular driver. Yeah, so I, I think we need to focus our discussions on this, uh, on, on just cloud hypervisor and not generalizing that. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um... If there's no more questions, then let's uh, move on. Um, I saw this uh, this entry of first cozy stack release, like a platform using Qbert and Kamaji and cluster API, and I don't see any like a name attached to this one. I'm yeah, not sure me. if it was brought up. Yeah, okay. So that's me, sorry. I will just put it there. Yeah, that's me again. Uh, I want to share uh, that we celebrating our first release of Cozy Stack. That's a platform uh, that use, it's based on Talos Linux and it runs uh, 
manage it services, including Kubernetes clusters, databases, as a services, and stuff like that. We use QVirt, Kamaji, and Cluster API, and all this tech around it. Uh, and we want to make it totally free. Uh, we provided this. We want to provide this project to CNCF, have cloud, uh, have community Slack later, and I hope uh, that this will work. So if you're interested, you can you want to try Kubeweird and uh, all this uh, opportunity to run managed Kubernetes clusters. Please join our project. Thank you. Yeah, great. Great to hear that. Thanks for that. Um, so I see that, um, ah, yeah, that Alici is just adding the old proposal about the cloud hypervisor. Um, Harshit, I think that might be also interesting for reference as reference for you, I guess. Yeah, I have taken a look at the wording. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so any last calls for the open floor? Something that came just directly to your mind so that you want to- I have a question. short question. Uh, just someone asked me about how can he use SPICE protocol and QXL video driver in Kubeweird. If I understand it correctly, it does not support it yet or already. Yeah, there is no support, and it was where we moved it actually. Uh, Victor, your audio isn't great, at least on my end. I can understand anything. <laughs> Same here. Sorry for that. The short is that the spy was spice was uh, removed, and it's not really supported for by anyone, at least to not, to our knowledge. Thank you, but there should be some sidecar which should be able to modify XML and enable it back or what the correct way for modifying XMLs. That would be possible, no, but, but you no, still not, not? No, because you, you have to have access to the key and move. Yeah, yes, and, exactly. That's the one problem. And then, so like for VNC, we have the VNC server running KMU and we have the web socket doing the connection between the VM and the client running the VNC client. It's the same with Spice would be, but Spice is much, much, com much more complicated. Uh, each, each thing is a TCP socket. So audio, video, keyboard, and that over proxy was handling that, managing that was one of the reasons that uh, was removed because it was quite hard to maintain uh, as far as I understand. Yeah. So I don't think there is an easy solution to have Spice in Kubernetes nowadays. And to be honest, like the I, I, I came from Spice and worked in Spice for several years and the community is very very dead at this moment. Like there is not, not that many people working on it. So yeah, I would, I would actually advise to either increase the community somehow or uh, move from the resolution. Got it. Just short question is uh, Red Hat, isn't Red Hat deprecated this protocol or uh, what the state of the upstream project? Red Hat. Red Hat has deprecated, yes, moved people around. And it was removed uh, already from like Spice clients. Or th th there is yet there is yet some backwards compatibility that we have to keep. So for instance, RHEL 9 guest running on RHEL 8 host. So things like that. Uh, there is some compa some compatibility matrix that we have to keep, 
Uh, but uh, overall, like there's basically just uh, let's say half a person working on it as a maintainer. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Victor. It was really interesting. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Um, yeah, um, Lubo just brought um, brought to mind that um, we will be hosting a uh, Cube Contract Fest at the KubeCon EU, uh, which will happen next month in uh, Paris and France. So if you are around there, like um, uh, this will be one of the uh, co-located events uh, that is happening around the uh, KubeCon EU in Paris. So if you're around, just uh, maybe you want to stop by. I'm just going to add the link um, to the uh, to the event uh, to the um, open floor document. Okay. And there we go. We have it right now. So this is, of course, especially to like onboard new contributors. Um, but still, it would be nice if you are an existing contributor just to drop by and say hello, which is great. Um, so, okay, then um, next one will be like pull requests that need attention. Um, we have this one here, like uh, this test utils go move create host disk image. Let me see. I think that is something from Oren, but I think he's not at this meeting, right? No, I don't see him in the in the attendees. But Lubo, I think you we we talked uh, about this in an earlier meeting, right? So you were already aware that there is something going on that is misconfigured somehow and failing the test, right? Oh, Lubo, Lubo left. I, I think this is a cosmetic PR, but yeah, I, I will have a look. Yeah, I was I was just seeing that somehow the test lanes were somehow complaining, and that it didn't even compile. So it might have been some. I saw something like circular dependencies or something going on. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I will have a look. Okay, cool. Yeah. If if it was up to me, that function would end up in slash dev slash null. Uh, that's me. Oh okay. <laughs> Good idea. Oh, host disks. To, you know, host disk are sort of like a, a, a leftover from when we didn't have enough storage. And, you know, at this point, we have lots of storage options. I don't think we need host disks. That's me. Okay. This uh, PR is like for, from an effort to clean uh, test utils.go. So it's not like a, a bug fix or something. It's like just a cleanup. Yeah, but still, I think um, maybe um, we, we just uh, can give some, oh, although I think um, Orange should already be familiar with what's going on upstream. So I'm not sure if he really needs advice on that. But still, maybe he just needs a pointer that it's failing somehow. So, um, But for now, no, it, it looks already like it's compiling again. So he might have fixed that already. But yeah, so. Lubo already agreed to look at that, so we should be okay. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, okay, so um, anyone else has any pull requests that he wants attention on? Okay. Um, so then let's move on. Um, we have then the mailing list review. Um, so there is the uh, Q 
Qubit bot suggestion for untrusted PRs. So I'm just going to for transparency. I think I should probably share where I'm looking. Oh, wait a second. Let me do it like this. Okay, so this one. Ah, oh, yeah. So, yeah, now I remember I can directly chime in on that one. Um, so, the thing is that um, we noticed that um, Qubit bot always suggests adding OK to test to PRs, um, even if uh, the authors of the PRs are some uh, people that are not yet belonging to the Qubit community, uh, which by itself somehow is, of course, like fair, but you would probably have this um, uh, this entry point for malicious activity when you would have this okay to test placed on the <clears throat> on the PR this would enable anyone to somehow um, like um, run uh, ma make the uh, tests or the automated tests run on every PR and um, we agreed that we do not want that. We want that only for uh, Qubit community members, so which um, of course uh, um, is the circle of people being uh, members of the Qubit org. So just to be clear, we disabled the okay to test um, command on uh, PRs in general so that it doesn't work for new PRs. Um, which come from uh, external contributors. What you need to do is uh, you can just like, for example, just run uh, the test commands as usual, um, but um, uh, the automated testing will not be uh, available for uh, external contributors. Any questions to that one? Okay, so then let's go to the next. Um, this is second ownership. Um, yeah, that's one thing that we also talked about and that we... Oh, we'll see you. Thanks for your attendance. So yes, Fabian raised this um, or wanted to bring a bit more of awareness that we want to somehow spread the load of like um, maintain or, or uh, code reviews and code approvals. Uh, we want to spread the load a little bit on more shoulders. And this is an afford to just like um, um, give people the opportunity to um, take code ownership uh, by um, adding yourself somehow to some SIG um, with which you then will be uh, like um, able to be assigned as a reviewer uh, or as a, uh, an approver. Um, and this is just like that we want uh, to uh, somehow revive the um, staled or stalled discussion from earlier um, in which we somehow uh, wanted uh, wanted to do that before. So this is just like that we that we pro uh, we are proposing a couple of new SIGs. Um, to be honest, there is still, to, to the first two, like the SIG node and the SIG cluster, there is still a bit of discussion going on. Um, so we are not entirely sure whether we want uh, to proceed with those. Um, from my understanding, those uh, SIGs were um, uh, formed to like split up the SIG compute, which is a pretty, pretty broad SIG. Um, to and uh, to to at least split it into two, so uh, to make the focus um, or or to make the focus more clear on whether it would be rather um, a node activity or rather a cluster activity. But if I understand correctly, this has not yet completely um, been uh, ironed out. But in general, just uh, for your awareness, um, that we are trying to. Um, uh, increase the uh, number of six so that we have more reviewers and approvers. And if you are 
interested and fond of things, then please chime in and get yourself on one of the onto one of the six, so that we um, so that you can contribute by reviewing the code. Um, okay. Any questions to that one? Yeah. I don't know. I hope everyone is still there. Um, so I, because I was talking so long, I uh, just hope um, that I didn't make people leave by my long talking. Okay, so then let's take a look. We're still here, so don't worry. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. Um, okay, so let me see. Um, the next one is, uh, um, oh yeah, that's interesting. So um, Vladik, are you still here? No, he dropped. Ah, oh, sad. Okay, because he uh, this was like about this uh, maroon pods POC that he I think um, dropped to the Cuba Death mailing list yesterday. He could have had a chance on uh, talking about that one, but um, yeah. So if everyone anyone wants to look into that, um, he has um, uh, opened up or or just uh, shared a proof of concept uh, called maroon pods. Um, that showcases um, how pods can be isolated on virtual machines with QBird. Um, yeah, I don't want to uh, rephrase everything here from the email. Please take a look at that one if you're interested. Okay, um, and the last one is that there is a proposal for integrating QPMC into the QBird ecosystem. Um, I'm not sure if someone is here who wants to talk about that one. I think the author, I didn't see him, but yeah, no. Um, I think Felix, you chimed in on that one. I saw you at least on the, yeah, there you are. Um, are there any questions to this one that we could somehow discuss inside this round? Uh, maybe I can just chime in uh, for context. So uh, it's it's an issue on Kubert for for some time already, and um, the author of this issue, I was in contact with him, and just to give some context, so uh, they they want to use this for like for testing scenarios where they set up their testing environments, and from what I understood, they they already have tooling to uh, set up bare metal machines, which uh, expose um, the Redfish API on their BMC. And so, so the idea was to extend Kubert with, with a BMC emulator, so they could use existing tooling to um, yeah to facilitate the uh, Kubert for testing purposes. OK, sounds fair. Great. Thanks for the uh, context on that one. Okay, um, so then, okay, that's it for mailing list review. Um, then let's take a look at the box scope. We have two issues that should be looked at. Wait a second, that doesn't open. So the first one is uh, a bird launcher failing with connecting to Lipid Demon Field on EKS. Okay. Yeah, anyone uh, fond on uh, assisting um, on failures on EKS? I, I'm not an expert. I'm not going to volunteer to, to diagnose the issue, but I, I find this suspicious because the connecting deliberate daemon failed is usually a red herring. That happens commonly at the beginning of the, of the boot up process while Libert's still starting. I think it may be a completely, it's possible that it's a completely unrelated issue. And the poor user filing this bug just simply picked up the first error looking thing 
in the log. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty fresh. It's like just um, it has been open on uh, yesterday, I think, in uh, in the afternoon, at least for me in the afternoon. Um, and he has uh, chimed in three hours ago. So um, at least he is looking at the AWS nodes. So it seems to be like, uh, um, yeah. So I guess that we should probably ask for more information, right? So like um, have more like the, um, um, also the configuration, like the, um, the, um, the VMI configuration, for example, but yeah. He has just only given this one, this which is a part of that one. Uh, again. Ah, emulation, interesting. Okay, yeah, I mean, like uh, when you are using emulation, things are getting pretty slow, and um, I'm not sure you might need to wait a bit more. Okay, so still. Um, I guess that there are no takers for this one. Okay, I'm just going to chime in. That, um, I've just asked for a bit um, information whether he has observed uh, for a longer time and what did happen later on. I hope that I somehow um, covered what you were saying, Stu. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next one and let's see. This is the launcher, then the second one is the GTE. GK WebSocket bad handshake and error starting virtual machine. Servers ask for the client to provide credentials. Interesting. Did anyone already look at that? I don't see anyone at least chiming in. Okay, quick start cloud. Simple VM running in GK. Anyone eager to assist on this one? Uh, I can give it a look. Okay, thanks, Felix. I'm just going to assign on this one. Thank you for that. Should I ask for more information or should it be sufficient what is in there? I'll have a look and if I need information, I will ask. Okay, thank you. Okay then. 
So box crop is done. Then we have a couple of flaky test fixes that we want to um, celebrate here. We have some flakes fixed in the compute lane, which was by Federico contribution. Great. It has been merged last week, I think. Great. So then this one, there is some network fixes. Um, I'm not sure if that is just rather a code quality. No, it, it's it's uh, clearly um, marked with kind flag. So great. That is by Eddie. Thanks for that. This one is a flag for sure. Yeah, thanks for fixing it. But I'm not sure if Eddie is still here, to be honest. I think I saw him, but yeah, there he is. But yeah, so Thank thanks. And the last one is a data raise in the hot plug test. Um, I think that this is pretty fresh. And yeah, it's still um, held since we want to get the other uh, quarantine uh, test in. So um, yeah, but already thanks for that one. It will then get merged uh, shortly after, hopefully. Um, yeah. And um, this, I think, brings us to the end of the meeting. Um, any final remarks? Anything to mention still? Okay, so I think then we are done. Um, thanks everyone for your attendance to the Cupid community meeting. Have a nice rest of your day. Have a nice rest of your week and see you next week. Thanks everyone. See you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye-bye.